In this section, we're going to talk about another important, super important view directive called V model. V model directive is also known as bi directional data binding. So, unlike mustache notation and V text, because they are considered as one way data binding. So, what is data binding and what do I mean by one way or bi directional or two way, right? Let's kind of review what happened in the mustache notation and the V text because they're the same. I'll only show you one example. So, this is the very first demo I showed you in this course. What is one way data binding? Is we're going to define a variable called a message or number here in the data object inside the constructor of view instance. One way means we're going from here, from script, into HTML, into div with id equal to app. So this is one way. So view is going to bind this value to this placeholder. So remember when view loads, this uh, notation here, this mustache notation or interpolation expression will be replaced with the value. This is called data binding. We're binding it to it. But this is one way. If I change the value here, it will not affect the value here. So it's only one way, not round trip. What if we want to give a user a chance to change something on HTML, and that change will also be automatically updated back to script? That's considered as bi-directional or two-way or round trip data binding. And we can use V model to achieve this. So it's very important. In the last sentence, I said V model can only be used in HTML input, select, text area, and other components. So in other words, you can only use V model in some text. You cannot use V model in everything. Okay, which makes a lot of sense because remember, using V model, we're giving our user a chance to change the value and Using input, select, and text area is their only chance to change some value on HTML. You cannot change a value in H1, you cannot change a value in A tag because those are non editable. But things in input box, like a username and password, or in radio button, or in select, or in text area, those are editable. So that gives the user a chance to bind the data back to the data in script or in data object. So now let me go to VS Code and show you one example. We're in demo 12, vmodel.html. In this HTML, we've got a form. In this form, there are many input boxes. Input name, input company, gender, so there are two radio buttons, and three check boxes. Here is what we rendered in browser. So for example, here I can type Harry Potter, company is Hogwarts, gender is male, now I can only pick one, and hobbies, I'll pick Quidditch and Basketball. The user made a, made a modification of all those input values. Next, how can we bind the updates in HTML into a, for example, a JS object in data? Right now, there's no data here. Okay. What we can do is first, let's create a JS object. Let's call it user. And since this user has uh, some internal structures, we're going to make user a JS object. In user, we have name. Initially, it can be empty. Uh, next, we have company. And also, initially, it's empty because, you know, initially, it's an empty form. Next, we have gender. Initially, it's empty. Okay. In the end, it's tricky. Hobbies should no longer be a string, but be an array, right? Because you have more than one hobbies. So, in hobbies, I'm going to use an empty array. Okay, so this is an empty user object. Now we're ready to use this to store or to receive user's input. Now we're going to bind from here to here. How can I do that? The answer is using V model. So here's how I do it. Remember, V model only works with input. Inside input, I'm going to add V model equal to. All right, be careful. So in here, you can refer to anything you define in data. In this case, I'm going to refer to user, but that's not enough because we have to refer to user dot name. So when user input something in this input box, whatever is input here in this case, Harry Potter will be bind automatically to here. So this will be no longer be empty, but be Harry Potter. User dot name. For next one is 
Let me copy and paste. So this would be user company. And in here, we have to put two V model. So for each video button, have one V model. This time is user gender. User gender. And for here, for each input, we're going to have a V model equal to user dot hobbies. Okay, so copy, paste, paste. Okay, format. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh. Of course, when I refresh, everything's gone, right? So I want you to know what happened here is once I add V model, now I established a bi-directional or two-way binding. When I first load the page, view will automatically use the current value in this user where which we don't have any value right to populate everything here so we're going to copy this empty string and put it here and copy this company and put it here so it's really nothing right because we start with the empty object so now i'm going to type something harry porter hogwarts and uh, mail quidditch okay so what happened next is I'm going to print them in console. So press F12. Now, if you remember that, what we can do is using app.users. And now you see we have this user. Let me print the name here. Well, as you can see here, if we put company, the company here already have values. It was empty. But after user input Hogwarts, it has value. What about um, hobbies? Let's see hobbies. Hobbies is an array of two hobbies, okay? So it's uh, Quidditch and basketball. What about uh, gender? It's M, because M is the value. This value is binded to the gender here. Because we used empty user in the first place, so when we load this, so when we first load this, everything is empty, okay? Everything is empty. So to make things more interesting, I really show you the concept of bi-directional, right? Right now, uh, what you see is really one way, right? How we bind everything HTML into uh, this user. But actually, that's because we don't have any data when we start with. Let's assume that uh, we retrieve this user from database in remote server, right? Say we're going to edit an existing user called Harry Potter. I'm going to uh, simulate this. Uh, we're really supposed to use Axios to request this uh, user from backend. But now I just hard code it there. Let's assume that those are obtained from you know, the remote side. So Harry Potter and company here is, let's say TCU here, okay? And then gender is, uh, of course, M. And hobbies, uh, for example, we can put uh, Quidditch. Oh, make sure that this one is the same as the value you put here. Okay, Quidditch, copy and paste, make sure it's right. And next one, we're gonna have basketball, let's say. Save. All right, I'm going to refresh this page now, behold, because now we're starting with an existing user, right? And we have a bi-directional binding. So if I refresh, wow, initially we got all those value populated. Why? Do you remember bi-directional? Because when I first load, since there is a V model, right? We, we automatically copy this and paste it into the first input box and so on and so forth. Uh, so this, this is the one-way one way binding. But view model also support the other way, right? So two way. So if I change this to, so let me show you this using F12, type user dot company. It's TCU, right? Now the user is going to use data, data binding. I'm going to change it to hog words. And when I click here, right, that data is saved in there. So this time, if I press this again, it becomes hog words. So this is really the two-way binding or bi-directional binding. It's a really powerful feature. And think about this. How would you implement this in jQuery or native JS? It would be like thousands of lines of code, right? But using view, everything is clean. In here, we never modify DOM. And in here, we never modify JS. They are separated. Everything is clean and nice. Since vModel is super important, let me show you a second example. Now I'm in demo 13, vModel2.html. So in this case, it's very simple. We have a message 
Uh, this is a one-way binding. So when we load the page, I am the message will be printed in H4 font. Next is the input. Now in this input, I created a two-way or bi-directional data binding. So MSG also points to the property in this data object. When I view it, the initial message here is I am the message in H4 and also in this uh, input. No surprise. What is interesting here is now, what if I change this I am the message? If I add one more exclamation mark, so what will happen? Can anyone explain what happened? Now, when I type something in the input box, it will also change this H4, but it looks like they're not connected. Well, in fact, they are connected. So what happened here is when I change MSG, first I'm changing MSG on the page, right? In this input box. And then this change because of V model, bi-directional data binding, this message here, MSG in data object has changed. But since this message has changed because view is reactive, view will detect this change of this data object and it will change everything that using MSG mustache notation. So that's step one, we change something in input box and that, that change gets updated to this message in data object. And step three, view use reactivity system to change H4 MSG, this mustache. So I hope now you can understand what is one-way binding and what is two-way binding or bidirectional binding.